Modo morsels. Holy morsels, Batman. Morsels or more cells, Robin. This is a lithophane. I can tell you're impressed. The real magic happens when you hold it up to the light. What do your elf eyes see, Legolas? The thickness of the plastic is modulated by an image, and so different amounts of light are transmitted in different places. This looks like a job for Modo's procedural modelling system. The lithophane starts life as a cuboid. Here we see the master at work as he deftly selects the cube primitive from the operations menu. Now we need to decide how many segments we want in X and Y. I happen to know that my image is 1920 by 1080, so let's choose something with the same ratio. We can increase this later, before the final print. We'll do the same thing for width and height. This size is good for a print. For thickness, you may need to experiment depending on the translucency of your plastic. Let's zoom in and see what it looks like. Now we need to move the vertices on the front and back faces using an image. Our friend in this case is the push operator. This will move vertices in the normal direction to the surface. Out of the box it will operate uniformly on all the vertices, but there are ways to modify this behaviour. We can use a falloff in the toolpipe section to modulate the push, and we can use the selection to pick just the front and back faces. We want to use an image to modulate the push, so we'll use a texture falloff, and we'll also need to specify the texture to use. In this case, an image map. Now we need to set up the texture to project onto the surface correctly. This is an especially simple situation, so we can use a planar map in the Z direction. And of course, we need to select the image itself. I'm going to start with a test image, which is useful for getting the push set up right. The image has some useful text telling me which areas should appear light, these should be thin, and dark, and these should be thick. Nothing has happened yet, but do not fret. We need to specify a mount by which to push the vertices. Well, that's rather disappointing. The push is working, but there's no sign of the texture. Notice also that the thin edges are also being pushed. We will fix that in a bit. Our problem is that the texture size is much too big. We need to match it to the size of the cuboid. There, much better. Except that the thin bits are thick and the thick bits are thin. Clearly we need a negative offset in the push operator, and not very much of it, otherwise it will push through. Now let's deal with the edges. I want to select the front and back faces. I can do that with a selection operator. These look a bit mysterious to start with, but all they do is iterate over each of the primitives in your mesh, and then perform some calculations that you set up to determine which ones should be selected. So, to set this up, we will need to be in the schematic. I'm going to select the vertices on the front and back faces by looking at their normals. So, add a normal channel to the operator, then separate out the select input. Setting this to true will select the corresponding vertex. The Z component of the normal will be 1 for front faces and minus 1 for back faces, so we need to make them look the same using an absolute function. Then we can test for the value being equal to 1 and catch both cases. Add a logic a is equal to B node, take the output from the absolute function, feed it into the value A, set the value B to 1, and now all those 
vertices with a normal of 1 or minus 1 can be selected by the vertex selection operator. Not much has visibly changed, but the edge vertices should no longer be selected by the push operator. Just to check, I'll boost the shift amount. Yes, it looks OK. I would also like to create a border around the edge of the picture. To do this, I'm going to shrink the selections using, surprisingly, the Grow Shrink selection operation. Negative numbers shrink the selection and checking again we can see that it has worked. The final step is to bend the sheet. I do this to make the lithophane stand up on its own. But if you're mounting it in a frame or sticking it on a window, for example, don't bother with this step. I'm going to use two bends out of a misplaced sense of symmetry or perhaps stupidity, but you could do this with just one bend if you wanted to. We want to bend in the X direction and the length should correspond with half the horizontal size of the cuboid. More conscientious modelers will rig this distance to set it automatically. Well, that's not bending in the right direction. Close, but no cigar. We just need to rotate the bend through 90 degrees to get what we want. The second bend is much the same, except that we need to rotate it about Y by 180 degrees. We're pretty close to being ready, but we need to use the right image now. Et voila! The image is a little blurry because we haven't subdivided the cuboid enough. But that's easy to fix. We just need more geometry. It takes a short while to calculate all 1.3 million polygons, but here it is. I'm going to export using the STL format, so before exporting, check that the units in your preferences are set correctly. For the Cura slicer, which I use, it expects STL files to use millimetres as units. Now, choose the Export Selected Layers menu option for the mesh, and choose STL and save the file. Let's go to the slicer now. We need to load the file and arrange the model on the build plate. Slice it and then gasp at how long it's going to take. In Cura you can preview the layers. It's useful to check that there are no holes and to make sure that it is as thin as it can be in the bright areas. Now we print and wait. Holy morsels, Batman!